we're out driving around tonight doing some testing. Uh, you can see I've got a digital dashboard here that shows my live sensors and what the speed, what the decibel rating is. We did a bunch of before and after testing here and we're gonna compare that and see what kind of actual improvements we got on this system. There's a lot of good videos out there about sound deadening and increasing the stereo quality in your car. Um, this video, I wanna try something a little different. Rather than just do the door knocking test, or hold the phone while I'm trying to drive and let you hear it, I wanted to actually quantify how good the sound improvement can be in a car. I've got a sound decibel meter. I'm going to tap that into a Campbell Scientific data logger with GPS. We're going to have a studio microphone inside the truck so we can get the best sound for the videos and a couple of cameras as we're driving down the road. For the sound deadening, I wanted to go with a non-asphalt based sound damper. So I ended up using the Amplifier Pro. This comes from Second Skin. It's a butyl rubber, it's got aluminum, and this is the thing that I put everywhere in the vehicle. So this is the base of the build. The other things they had that I was really impressed with, we've got Luxury Liner Pro. This is gonna further dampen sound, and it's a very heavy mat. Heatwave Pro, this is going to be a thermal blocker. Megazorb, this will be a sound absorber to absorb excess noise in the vehicle and Overkill Pro. We're going to put this in behind plastic panels to stop the rattling inside the vehicle. So actually applying the sound ending for the entire vehicle, I pulled out all the carpet, the seats, the door panels, got it down to bare white metal, as you can see. Then I put the Damplifier Pro into the entire vehicle, everywhere I could. A pro tip I want to tell you that was very helpful for me is I went in and took pictures of all of my door panels and the trim edges because I wanted to see where there was a transition from the plastic panel to the white, uh, the white metal. Uh, the reason for that is I can then refer to those pictures when I'm actually installing it and make sure I don't have a bunch of sound deadening material that goes past that edge. The entire vehicle is lined with Damplifier Pro. On the floor, what we ended up doing is putting Damplifier Pro down. I then put Luxury Liner Pro and then the Heat Wave Pro on top of that. So I've got three additional layers on the floor. That's not counting the factory insulation and carpet. Uh, I have the factory floor mats, and then I've got a heavy duty rubber floor mat on top of that. So I've got about six layers of materials now on my floor. So for the doors, both the front and the back, I ended up using the Damplifier Pro to sound in the outer door skin. Once that was on, I added the Luxury Liner Pro or the Megazorb behind the speakers to try and absorb some of those sound waves and to further dampen the sound and the vibration. The inner door skin has a 100% layer of Damplifier Pro, and then I've got the Luxury Liner Pro in between the plastic and the door. And again, that Luxury Liner Pro is to keep that door panel from shaking when the bass hits. On the back of the vehicle, it has the Damplifier Pro, and then I added some Luxury Liner Pro to it, as well as some other materials to try and uh, quiet that down. The roof of the vehicle has the Damplifier Pro and then I have two layers of Megazorb and then it goes to the factory headliner. I want to demonstrate sound deadening with this triangle which is going to act like the sheet metal on your car. Second Skin with their Damplifier Pro included this installation card. They talked about using a 25% as a minimum coverage, 60% as recommended, or 100% for full coverage. For the sound system upgrade, I went with a combination of Pioneer and JBL. The head units of Pioneer 2550 Nex, I really liked the Apple CarPlay, uh, Android Auto, and the user interface was really good. To get a little more power to the speakers, we're going to use the Pioneer 4-channel amplifier, and the speakers are JBL GTO series. The Maestro uh, interface allows me also to hook up to the car and not lose my steering wheel controls as well as get additional car diagnostics like transmission temperature. This is the after test we're doing tonight. 
For comparison's sake, you can see the old rear speakers that came out of the top of the cab. They were super glued to the headliner and the new rear speakers uh, that are mounted in the door, they turned out pretty clean. So for this test, we've got a sensor that's gonna be mounted to the door. That's gonna pick up the vibrations inside. Uh, when you're playing music and you've got it turned up, this is what makes the music really uh, feel like it's hitting hard. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. We're gonna try and visually capture that with that sensor. You'll see that on the screen here. That's being monitored by our data logger. And then we have our microphone here. Keep in mind, we're recording music that's coming through speakers. Uh, for both before and after, that's never gonna be as good as the actual digital recording of the song. For the comparison of the sound systems, I've got the stereo playing the same song. We're gonna toggle back and forth between the two and you can hear the difference. To know which system is the sound, where the sound is coming from, take a look at what's highlighted or where the sound source is showing. What we're actually monitoring on the graph is this is the physical door shaking. Uh, we're measuring it in G-forces, so as you've got a lot stronger bass, you're gonna see that and it's gonna shake the door a lot more. I'm going to go do a post run. We're going to do a post run now, do a quick test. We've got the setup going, the sensors are ready, monitoring system is good to go. A couple things you're going to want to take a look at. Microphones are very similar to ears. They're going to be very dynamic in their listening range. So when you drive this before and after, yeah, you can hear road noise in both of them. The real indicator is what is that noise sounding like? So listen to the different sounds between the two and also watch the decibel meter. That's the real indicator to show you how much noise or sound you've got inside the vehicle. Keep in mind when you cut three decibels of noise, you're actually cutting the sound in half. So it's significantly quieter, even though your ears and the microphone adjust to it. Where you're really gonna notice this difference is when you have other noises in the vehicle, like conversation, or the radio, now they're competing with a lot less road noise. I've got a graphic created of vehicle speed versus decibels, and here you can see the factory performance. Nerd alert! So as I go faster, the vehicle gets noisy. That's kind of what you expect. When you look at this graph, I put in some comparisons over to the right, show you a very quiet rooms in the 20 decibel range, a conversation maybe 50 decibels. It starts getting really loud up in the, you know, above 60. Uh, for scale, if you're standing right next to a jet engine, that'd be at about 140 decibels. One thing that's important to understand with this type of a scale is what the decibel, uh, decibels really are. They're logarithmic, so it's important to understand logarithmic scales. I've got this visualization to help show you. On something like a linear scale, uh, it's pretty easy to understand. Miles per hour is linear. 
As you go up, you're adding one mile per hour. Think of it as a line that keeps adding one as you increase each number. But in logarithmic, it's a little different. So to visualize it, instead of adding one to the length of a line, now we're going to add one to the length of a side of an area. And so what really happens is, as you increase, your area gets significantly larger with each of those. To kind of help with that, here's a scale for comparison. So if I have a change in three decibels, that means that I'm twice as loud as I was. If I increase volume by six decibels, now I'm four times as loud. Uh, 10 decibels is you're now 10 times louder. So let's take a look at the actual before and after. So here's the before and here's the after. You can see the sound deadened vehicle is significantly quieter. When you look at it, you can see right there at the zero miles an hour. That's with the truck sitting idle. We've got a reduction of about six decibels. So this is cutting down the sound by a factor of four. Or you're sitting at about 25% of the noise you were previously. Up at highway speeds, I've got it at 60 miles an hour. You've got a reduction of about three decibels. So that's half the energy. So the vehicle is half as noisy as it was. The other way to kind of visualize the difference is I, you know, I thought I'd show it with some area. So in the before, the stereo and the road noise, they really felt like they were about equal. And so, you know, you turn off the stereo, you're going to hear the road noise. You turn on the stereo, you're really going to have to turn it up to be able to compete with the road noise. And when I was going highway speed, the stereo was almost at full blast. Now with the after, we've significantly reduced the road noise. So we've made that area smaller and we've increased the stereo performance by about a factor of four. So when I go down the road, what I'm now listening to is the music. I'm not paying attention to the road noise because it's just now a very small background noise. The other cool thing is when I'm driving at low speeds, I can turn on some music. And even when I get up to an upper speed on the highway, I can still hear it without adjusting the volume. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I've got some other cool projects and you can see those when those come out.